Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. Oh, I'm excited to shoot this vlog this week. I'm excited. My dear friend Ari Witten has published an amazing book. It's called Eat for Energy, How to Beat Fatigue, Supercharge Your Mitochondria, and Unlock All Day Energy. And you know I love this book because that right there at the bottom of the book is a quote by me. It says, this is required reading for anyone who wants a scientific roadmap out of lethargy and into full vitality. Oh my gosh, Ari Witten, congratulations. And in this vlog, I'm gonna share with you what he talks about in chapter two, which is about your circadian clock, about getting a good night's sleep well beyond the basics of sleep hygiene. Um, and about the science of how, when you eat, uh, and a little bit about what you eat, will help you sync up your circadian rhythm to get a much better sleep and also improve longevity, reduce oxidative stress, shed weight, um, all, uh, blah, 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 so many things, so many things, help rebuild your mitochondria. The book starts off talking about mitochondria, the science of mitochondria, and if you didn't know, um, when people have really, really bad energy, they'll go to the they'll go to the doctor, and uh, you know who knows what they'll be told by their doctor. But eventually, usually, they'll make their way to a naturopath, an osteopath, a functional medicine doctor, um, an acupuncturist, or something, and they'll be told that they have adrenal fatigue. Well, in the first chapter of this book, he debunks the notion that adrenal fatigue, so-called adrenal fatigue, is responsible for really, really bad energy levels. In fact, it turns out that the adrenal fatigue hypothesis, which is essentially that uh, when someone is burned out and showing really, really low energy levels, what's happened is that uh, their adrenals are exhausted and they're not producing cortisol enough anymore. And it turns out that the scientific literature does not show a support for that hypothesis, that there's no consistent relationship between cortisol and uh, burnout, essentially. And what the scientific literature does show is that when people are exhausted, including in the extreme, what's going on is that their mitochondria are uh, damaged or uh, in disrepair or um, in a low production mode of energy. So. Mitochondria, if you didn't know, are the little bits in the cells, the organelles in the cells that make our energy, right? These are the powerhouses of the cell, the furnaces of the whole body. And if we don't have enough of them, or they're too small, or they're too weak, or they're in bad repair, we're not going to have very good energy. And I love hearing Ari talk about energy. He uh, says, hey, think about it, right? Think about the enormous range in human energy, right? Think about a seven-year-old kid with ADHD who has so much energy that they can't even sit still through dinner, right? They're hopping up out of their chair and they're doing laps around the dining room table while the adults are engaged in a dinner party and uh, running here and running there and talking nonstop. And then imagine someone late in life who's put on a lot of weight and is sitting in a rocking chair for a lot of the day and barely has enough energy to get out of that chair once or twice a day to putter off to the kitchen to get something. Someone who is so low energy that they're hardly moving at all. It's not like a difference of, you know, some people have 50% more energy than others. It's literally orders of magnitude. Some people have so much more energy than others, it would blow your mind. And I gotta say, I started listening to Ari Witten when it comes to energy um, and a lot of other things, to tell you the truth, years ago, maybe five years ago. And I can now report that I have boundless energy. I bound out of bed, I go, 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 I sleep deeply and soundly at night, and I wake up refreshed and ready to go the next day. I love my energy levels. I am so, so grateful for my energy levels. And a lot of it has to do with following Ari Witten's guidance uh, on foods, on supplements, on structuring my life, on structuring my days. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit in this vlog, but really you should go get the book. And at the end of this vlog, I'm gonna share with you 
a special gift that I have for you when you go get this book, which will become, I promise you, a classic in the bright line eating world. Um, yeah, I have something really sweet in store for you. So chapter two, it's about our circadian clock and about aligning the, the circadian clocks in our brain with the peripheral clocks in the rest of our body. So we used to think that the circadian rhythm was basically governed by the one circadian clock in the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus, sort of right behind the forehead in the hypothalamus, which governs all sorts of other things, including feeding behavior and a lot of homo uh, uh, homeostatic uh, mechanisms like uh, you know thirst and temperature and so forth. Uh, and you know, there's a little nuclei in there called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, often abbreviated the SCN. And it's very sensitive to light exposure, light exposure in particular coming in through the eyes, um, and especially light exposure at the higher frequencies, you know, the, the green and blue frequencies of light, especially. And later research, more recent research, a lot of stuff in the last 10, 15, 20 years, showed that we also have peripheral clocks that are keeping track of time in their own way, including cells in the gut lining, in the liver, in the pancreas, in the kidneys. Um, and when their sense of time is out of sync with the brain's sense of time, a huge mismatch occurs and it kills our circadian rhythm and it kills our energy. So, What's interesting is that these peripheral clocks are not reset by light. A lot of them actually are reset by our eating. True story, you may have heard this before, but when I started eating the Bright Line way, when I started eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner and not eating after dinner, I went from a night owl who would often stay up until two and three and four in the morning and then sleep well past noon to essentially a morning person. You know, I wake up first thing in the morning alert. And for years of my adult life, I've gotten up at 5 a.m. Sometimes if I need more time in my day, I'll start setting my alarm at 4.30 a.m. and I will get up at those kinds of hours. These days I'm sleeping a little bit later, 6 a.m. Or, or so forth, something like that. But uh, essentially I've turned into someone who has no problem going to sleep. I get sleepy at nine or 10 o'clock at night, and I go to bed with ease. I never used to be able to do that. Well, let me share with you the four keys to resetting your peripheral clock so that it stays in tune with your central clock, thereby smoothing out the peaks in your hormones and allowing your entire body to work effectively to produce optimal energy and the best night sleep possible and Consequently, optimal fat loss, optimal fat loss. So the four keys are, first of all, watch the window of your eating, right? Research shows that the average person in the United States of America is consuming calories, essentially, from the time they wake up till the time they go to bed. I mean, literally rolling out of bed and getting some coffee and putting cream and sugar in it, and then eating calories throughout the day and rounding out the day with some food in their bed or on the couch, watching a late show at 11 o'clock or midnight, eating some chips, eating something, and uh, hardly ever not eating. And so that would be a feeding window, an eating window of, I don't know, from 6 a.m. until 11 p.m., something like that, like literally only going maybe seven hours without eating. That is actually very, very common in the United States of America. And one of the things we get right here in Brightline Eating is we shorten our eating window so that we're only eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we're not eating anything after dinner, and we're not eating anything before breakfast. Note, this is a reason not to put almond milk or oat milk or whatever in your coffee if you, eat, if you drink your coffee um, a couple hours before you eat your breakfast, right? That is dramatically shortening, um, uh, or rather lengthening your eating window, shortening your fasting window. You don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that the first calories that go into your mouth are with breakfast and you're not consuming anything before that. 
Okay, so the first thing is your eating window. How, how short do you want to get your eating window? You don't have to go too crazy with it, he says in the book. He says eight to 12 hours. Get it to eight to 12 hours. So you might eat all your food between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. or 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. or 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. or something like that, you 6 p.m. You don't have to go too crazy with it. Um, and if that feels daunting, make it a 12 hour window at first. Try 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., okay? But the second key has to do with the clock time of that window. Now, interestingly, research shows that people who do shift work and are eating overnight, eating in direct contrast to the circadian clock in their brain, right, um, have really bad outcomes. As a matter of fact, shift work is the one occupation that has no exposure to uh, carcinogenic substances, right, like chemicals or what have you, that is actually listed as a carcinogenic occupation officially, right, by health organizations because shift work, meaning eating in the middle of the night, is so detrimental to your health. So it's not just that you want to keep the window um, nice and tidy in terms of your eating, keep all of your eating within uh, 8 to 12 hours. It's also that you want those 8 to 12 hours to be at the time when the sun is up. You want to be eating while the sun is up, ideally. So the third key to optimizing the timing of your eating and uh, how you eat in terms of your circadian clock to align the peripheral clock with the central clock is stacking your calories, your food, earlier and earlier in the day, ideally. Now, most people eat most of their food in the latter half of the day. As a matter of fact, for a lot of people, it's 50% of their calories are eaten after 6 p.m. Now, that is, not how we want to be doing it. It turns out that there's a lot of studies that show that the earlier you eat your food, the better the outcomes. And one of the reasons for that is that the food that you eat will hit your body differently depending on what time of day it is, meaning in terms of insulin response, glucose response, uh, how much of it is stored as fat and so forth. This has impacted my coaching in Bright Line Eating. I used to uh, have people add food to lunch or dinner first as they were approaching maintenance. I now usually have people add food to breakfast first as they're approaching maintenance. And for my own meal plan, I typically only add food to breakfast as I have to add and subtract food because my uh, energy levels and my, not my energy levels, but my metabolism, I guess, is going up and down and so forth. I add food to breakfast and I add more food to breakfast and that's usually it. I usually leave my lunch and dinner alone. So the earlier you can stack your calories, the better. Try to get to a point where um, it's one third, one third, one third uh, at most, right? So 30% uh, or a third of your calories are at dinner max. And in bright line eating, that's pretty easy to do. Like just have three equal meals and if one of them is gonna be slightly larger, make it breakfast. Word to the wise, make it breakfast. And the final key to optimizing your circadian clock for the best sleep, the best fat loss, the best longevity, and so forth, is gonna be uh, music to your ears here if you do bright line eating, and that is the consistency of your eating. So it turns out that it's way better to eat your meals at a consistent time as opposed to willy-nilly throughout the day. And that is because the circadian clocks in the, our periphery, in our gut lining and in our pancreas and in our liver and so forth, they're very habit-driven and they get used to the time of day and they start to predict what's going to happen and they get far more efficient in our favor if we're consistent with our eating and then the hormones know exactly what they're doing and the system hums and runs just right. Uh, so consistency is actually a real key. Now, I don't know about you, but before Bright Line Eating, my eating was all over the map, 
all over the map with, I was, I was laughing when I talked to Ari in the interview that uh, you might see here coming up soon. Um, I was saying like, uh, I, I think maybe a lot of days, 100% of my calories were eaten after 6 p.m. Or maybe not. Maybe I would go out to brunch and gorge myself and eat a lot of calories early in the morning or in mid-morning. It was such a crapshoot how I would eat. But in Brightline Eating, we're quite consistent with our eating and that is super healthy. In the book, he's got incredible tips around alcohol and around caffeine. Caffeine is an interesting one. It matters more sort of when and how you use it. His advice around caffeine was quite interesting to me. I'm gonna leave you uh, to get the book to check that out. Eat for Energy by Ari Witten, W-H-I-T-T-E-N. And here's what you get if you get that book. I, I got on Zoom a couple days ago and I talked with Ari. He's one of my best friends and we hadn't caught up in months. And I recorded an interview with him where I asked him some very pointed questions. And if you wanna see that interview, then get the book in any format and send proof that you got it to Brightline Eating. Now, the way you do that is you email us at the name of the book. So email us at eat for energy. E-A-T-F-O-R energy, eat for energy at brightlineeating.com. Email us with proof that you got the book. So that could be an Amazon order number. It could be a picture of you holding the book because you just bought it at a Barnes and Noble. It could be um, any, you know, a screenshot from your Audible account. It could be anything of the sort. Just send an email with any kind of proof that you bought the book to Eat for energy at brightlineeating.com and we will send you promptly a link to this interview that I did with Ari just a few days ago. Now, uh, what you're gonna get is, I asked him about intermittent fasting because I get that question all the time. I told him the answer that I typically give and he said, well, that's mostly good. <laughs> and then he went on to provide some really interesting information, including that intermittent fasting isn't what most people think it is. It isn't what I thought it was. So that was a very interesting education. I also asked him, you're gonna love this. I asked him the all important question about weight plateaus, like when you're losing weight and then you stop losing weight and you're not losing anymore, and maintenance weight creep. So if you're in your bright body, you've had your bright transformation, and then your weight starts to creep up and you feel like, look, I'm not doing anything different. What is going on here? Why is my weight creeping up? And I didn't know what Ari's answer would be, but it blew my mind and it's gonna affect my coaching in the years to come. You definitely wanna check that out. And then at the end of the interview, I asked him, I said, look, so you've been working with people in Brightline Eating for a long time, because I send all, all, all my people to Ari. I send him a lot of people and he by now has worked with a lot of us. And so I wanted to know his take, if you will. I said, what's been most challenging and what's been most surprising working with people who do bright line eating? And uh, his answer was very interesting indeed. So if you wanna talk to one of the smartest human beings on this earth, well, listen to me talk, I guess. If you wanna overhear a conversation with one of the smartest human beings on this earth, one of the most knowledgeable, I swear to you, Ari has retooled his Facebook account so he never sees a, a cat picture or anything from anyone he knows, he only has the world's scientific outlets in his Facebook feed. That's all he allows in there because you can set what goes into your Facebook feed. And so every day when he, when he logs into Facebook to answer client questions in Facebook Messenger, what he sees are the day's most recent scientific journal articles. And he clicks on them, he reads them, and I have never met anyone who has read more scientific literature on the science of fat loss, the science of human energy, the science of metabolic health, the science of longevity, the science of exercise, so many things. Oh, and by the way, this book will also have tons about specific foods to eat. So if you wanna know, like to optimize your bright line eating food plan, what specifically should you be eating in each category, this book has got your back. So in conclusion, I just wanna say, there are so many things we can do around the timing of when we eat and how we stack the calories that we eat. Earlier in the day, super consistently, shorten that window, but you don't have to go crazy. There aren't a lot of benefits to making your eating window shorter than eight hours, for example. 
Um, yeah, and uh, it's so sweet because a lot of the things that he recommends we're already doing, but there's so much value in terms of fat loss and body composition and overall health and longevity and energy to optimizing your night's sleep by aligning your circadian rhythm, your peripheral circadian rhythm with your central circadian rhythm. So thank you Ari Witten for a great book. Go ahead and grab your copy, send your copy or your receipt of any kind in to us at eat for energy at brightlineeating.com. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.